if that person uh, had a list of list of do's and don'ts or shoulds and should nots, then I'd be like mm. politely. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> What's the best part about being artists in your forties? Yeah, forties is new twenties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it sucks to be cheated on. Yeah. You've talked about how you have been cheated on yes, in the past. Yes. 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 Vidya Pratik, welcome to Spill the Tea, my show Thank on you. Film Companion. Uh, I usually don't do a banquet hall setup, but something about this pairing, and I just couldn't say no to the opportunity of seeing the two of you together. And honestly, it's not because we haven't seen you on screen before. Kuch to hai, and that's what I want to get to at the bottom right. of this oh, interview. Lovely. Take me back to the first time you guys met. What were your first impressions of each other? Oh, my first impression was uh, that I'm going to meet with Devalan, <laughs> and uh, there's a film that I'll be uh, shooting with her. So for the first time, I remember that Tanuj and Swati they took me to her house, okay. and they wanted uh, both of us to sit together, just chit chat, and they wanted to click some photographs to look at how how we you know look yeah. together and all. So that was very awkward, <laughs> and for me, I was all already a starstruck guy and. And we were talking, and this was the expression. <laughs> she looked, she smiled, and she said, "It's awkward." And she started laughing. <laughs> I remember him coming in, and I had seen him as that uber confident Harshad Mehta, right? <laughs> so I was like, now I almost imagined him walking in with an arrogance and the right? soundtrack playing. <laughs> <laughs> But he walks in, and he's being awkward. So I was like, there's something awkward about what they're making us do. <laughs> so I think we just, when we were doing pictures, we started smiling and laughing, and the ice was broken. Yeah, It yeah. was damn easy, but uh, yeah, that was my first. So her like, her laughter actually made things easy. <laughs> it's classic, and, yeah, it's honestly, cla absolutely classic. It is. But speaking of this awkwardness, that's yeah. actually what I want to know because when I watched the trailer of Do Ar Do Pyar, there is a lived-in chemistry. Mm. There is also, in your case, this weight of lived-in resentment that mm. you guys have so beautifully created. How do you go so quickly from that awkwardness to this lived-in space? I, I guess it's it, the, we we read script couple of times. Was yeah. yeah. <laughs> we met before that couple of times during yeah. our look tests and all, and that's it. Yeah, ho oh, yeah. gaya. I think as actors also, you know, we are constantly thrown in with new people, Seha. Hmm. So I. Think we devise ways of breaking the ice. I do. Do Because you know what? Uh, do you know what that would be? For no, I, I don't know. I don't know. But I think I'm very interested in people. I'm very interested in getting to know people, their stories, and invariably. So if you know, I would strike up a conversation with anyone, and then if it's a co-actor, that much more. I'm very curious about people. So I think that helps break the ice, and that's very important to me. Because firstly, I'm just a curious person, yeah. and secondly, I think I want to enjoy the process. So if you get along, that's half the battle won. Because we're anyway, anyway, there are so many variables on set, right? You don't want another like something odd or awkward or uncomfortable between two people. And thankfully, I've never had that. But uh, and I think with good actors, it's it's like it happens like that. You know, like. I, I was like, oh my God! Here I had imagined him as this, and then he's going to be doing this, and he's walked in as a shy guy. So now it's it's very fascinating for <laughs> to me to yeah also. yeah to decode, um, yeah. yeah. And you had to go from starstruck to just she's my wife and I don't mm -hmm. even like her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so there, there's this comfort that needs to be shown yes. in yes. the film throughout. Yes. And I would give it to her a lot of credit that she made it so easy because see I I had to be comfortable yeah. that physical chemistry yeah. that because I don't know that while saying certain lines where I feel I feel I would feel like you know holding her hand I would feel like tapping on her shoulder yeah. that comfort if it comes from her that makes me more comfortable. To play along, hmm. to be natural, to be normal, hmm. and to focus on the character and don't get bogged down with certain things, you know. Yeah. 
and it was a little bit difficult for me in the sense because I was working for the first time with an actor like her, who is already accomplished, uh, senior, far more senior than me in in the business, in the main field cinema. So um, she actually made it comfortable for me, and that I guess that was easier for me then to do. Yeah, you actually talked about how in real life you. At some point, didn't see yourself get married, and Siddharth walked in at a time when you were least expecting yeah, it. Yeah. Filmy as that sounds, uh, what did you mean? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, as in, um, I'd never been in a long relationship before mm. Siddharth, and I was, I'd never wanted to be married. Like friends of mine were discussing, you know, but when I get married, this is what I want to do. Uh, this is the kind of guy I want, and I never had any of those ideas. I never discussed marriage plans or wedding, um, we wedding plans or anything of the sort. For me, there was this one burning desire to be an actor, and that's all that mattered. I didn't want anything to come in between me and the possibility of me getting to be an actor. And then it happened, so I was enjoying it. And I didn't think, I you know, I I think I also felt that um, a lot of women. I had seen around me uh, the brightest of women had gotten domesticated with marriage and that was not something I was willing to do and I felt like that happens to everyone. It was like a blanket mm. curse, <laughs> you know, so I was like, I don't want to fall into that trap at all. So uh, I always felt like even when, um, for example, people closer in age to me, when I saw them mad, the woman always took a step back and I was not willing to take that step back. So I decided in my mind that shadi is not for me. Hmm. Then Siddharth happened and he's just a different kind of man from a, the kind of men I had seen um, around. You know, and I just felt like he's so comfortable with who he is and therefore he's comfortable with me being who I am. And I was fully in love with him. And I think therefore this felt like the natural progression. And I, I you know, I just, uh, I, I feel like, so it's taken 12 years of proving my younger self wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and aren't you glad you yeah, did? Yeah, <laughs> and how? Yeah, actually my next question was that how, well growing up we often get asked, you know, if there was a checklist of who your ideal partner would be, what would be on that list? You clearly didn't have a list? No, I only had lists of directors I wanted to work <laughs> with. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember having a list of what the ideal girl would be like? I never had that kind of list and I, I never thought about that. In fact, because I started theatre so early huh. that I was always in huge group of girls and boys and all. So, it was always the idea of friends. Hmm. Hmm. There was never the idea of uh, a life partner and, and marriage and all that early. So in that young age, I never had the clue that something is going And then when engineering happened to me, uh, things were different. The world was, and I'm, I come from mechanical engineering department. Oh, 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 oh. So mostly all boys, mm -hmm. all boys. So half of the class would be near computer engineering class. Mm. <laughs> Where they would keep searching for some girls. <laughs> <laughs> but then Bhamini happened. Then Bhamini happened. Yes, yes. And now that you all are both decade long players in ah, this man. game of marriage. It's 15 years, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And well, 12 for you and 10 for me. Wow. What are your big red flags when it comes to marriage? Like what would you say now are non-negotiables for you? For me, I definitely think if it was someone who was not okay with me being me, if that person uh, had a list of list of do's and don'ts or shoulds and should nots, then I'd be like mm. politely. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so, you know, I, I definitely think that more than anything else. Uh, yeah, and from there, I'd say, of course, disrespect. Yeah, there is respect. and lack of value. But the, they're all. You intertwined know, somehow. Intertwined, absolutely. Yeah. So if the respect, yeah, respect for each other, each other's liking, disliking. So taking each other as separate human being. Hmm. Hmm. Because we are supposed to be different. Yes. If I get female version of Pratik, I will hate. <laughs> 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 so that that difference that we actually should welcome. Yeah. Because that's the difference which made us fall in love. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. 
Yeah. You know, I was actually talking to a friend recently and we were at lunch and suddenly out of the blue he goes, you know, I really love my wife, yeah. Hmm. And I was like, yeah, uh, okay. He's <laughs> like, no, I don't know. It's it's not obvious. Like, I feel like we don't say it out loud yeah. often enough. How amazing. Yeah. And he's like, and not just to her. Like, I feel like I just don't say it out loud wow. to people. And to I, people. it really made me think. <laughs> I like your friend. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like struggle with that just to like outright confess? No. Like, No. no. <laughs> not no. at all. Not at all. <laughs> you know, I think I'm very expressive and demonstrative and very vocal about my feelings for about my feelings and for Siddharth for sure but he's the one who's very he's very private and he'd faint if I said something like that <laughs> I know at award functions when I've said things on stage I've seen his face like oh my god you know what she says, just said <laughs> oh, but no I don't struggle with that I say it to him I say it to anyone who will care to listen <laughs> <laughs> what about you yeah I also say it but I am sure Bhamini will have another thing to say uh, he, he doesn't say it that frequently or maybe he, he doesn't say it <laughs> yeah, enough maybe. yeah well the other thing as a film journalist that I face all the time you should know is that when I go to a party the only question people want to know is what's the goss and right. who's sleeping with who right have you guys been able to figure out why is it that our first assumption is that an actor is always cheating on his spouse or her spouse? I think because you see them being uh, romantic yeah. on screen, right? And you imagine how it would be to, uh, you know, how that person must be in a relationship and therefore you feel that person is irresistible. Hmm. I think there's a certain something larger than life quality to it. Because we get asked this also. Yeah. Which is correctly put cost? actually. Yeah. And this is most of the cases, uh, most of the time this is true. That because audience takes these characters so yeah. seriously, yeah. so sincerely and it, it has really worked well yeah. in terms of the uh, conveying the emotions and all. Yeah. Then they believe that this guy is this guy. I also came in saying there's something about this pairing and yeah. I need to know. Yeah. <laughs> We like that. Yeah, well, as, as actors, we actually love that. But does it, did it ever bother you at any point that su you're constantly perhaps getting linked up, your spouses are getting dragged into it? Does it ever come in the way of a real uh, relationship? Sometimes it irritates that how can you be so judgmental about a person? Hmm. Yeah. But then I guess our job is such that we are constantly uh, there uh, being judged. Hmm. Open to scrutiny constantly. For whatever yeah. that we do. Even while we are working or even when we are not working. Yeah. But the profession is such that you are constantly being judged. So, yeah. you can't control anybody's mind though. You know, when I was younger, I used to enjoy this because I was not seeing anyone. <laughs> so, at least the rumours were keeping the fire alive. <laughs> 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 but once I met Siddharth, of course, I, you want to protect that, right? So, you're, uh, you, you do get sensitive about... Uh, things if people but I've not really been linked with anyone in the longest time so I'm fine you're okay with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah 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 but the film also sees the both of you cheating and of course it sucks to be cheated on yeah. you've talked about how you have been cheated on yes, in the past yes, and yes. one would assume that someone as beautiful and successful as you could possibly never be cheated on right but is that like not how it works apparently no it's definitely not how it works because you know, uh, when someone cheats on you, it's not a reflection on you. Hmm. It's actually a reflection so of well said. them. You know, but I didn't know that at that point, right? I was too young and I was devastated and heartbroken and shattered. And you think, oh, am I not good enough? It's never about you. It's about the person who's cheating. And it's about what that person is looking for. Uh, but, um, yeah, it, it still sucks. But I have to say that... Uh, which is what I found so fascinating about this story. You know, that how often do you see both couples, yeah. both people in a relationship cheating and both staying together still. You know, it's, it's a very, uh, and, and I'm so glad it's a rom-com. Yeah. Because it could have been a very intense. It like could very well have yeah, been. Yeah. Yes. A completely different take on it. There are some... Um, intense moments because it's a relationship story at the end of it but it is at the end of the day a rom-com which is what I, I feel because you know today a lot of people are grappling with Absolutely. keeping their relationships together so at a time like this I think more than ever people are going to relate and say oh my god you know yeah. that that's me or I think it's yeah. incredible that 
you've shown that one can very well fall back in love as well yeah. which is just <laughs> so interesting for this generation that's also quick to sort of make move judgments and move on perhaps right what's an area in your marriage that you would like to put more work into and just because it's effort is sexy right yeah yeah i think in my I case for, for i for instance want to listen before reacting or responding mm -hmm. so what would it be for you I, in my case i just want to give more time mm. be more available that that's something that i've been struggling ever since i'm married <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you've yeah. always worked a lot yeah so mm. but, but I, i actually want to be there and give time physically <laughs> yeah there's nothing more precious than time i guess yeah uh, for me there's no uh, one area because i think for the past pretty much before i got married i started my healing journey so i think i've been working on various aspects of myself which have obviously impacted our relationship um in um in a good way yeah yeah so i have been on that journey for a while now even before i met siddharth are you comfortable talking about it more cuz i just yeah. feel like people can only benefit from yeah yeah own. absolutely so i've been with this healer nidhu kapoor for the past 13 years the healing happens on the phone uh from wherever i am in the world and that's how we don't meet personally you can just fix up a time and have a conversation it's pretty much like therapy, therapy. she also gives you tools um it's something uh, it, um, simply put it's energy medicine wow. right so there are various uh modalities there are various tools that she employs and therefore i've also gotten habituated to using them and it's helped me sort myself and therefore it's impacted all my relationships i'm surer of who i am i'm happier with who i am and that invariably i think it it all goes back to the self so you know i i always find it amazing when people go to couples therapy because i really feel that couples therapy is one thing but you have to do uh your work as an individual most importantly so thankfully you know i've been doing this for long enough so i've i feel that's it's just changed my outlook on life mm. on myself this journey to love and accept myself has become more of a reality with you know with time mm -hmm. thanks to this journey i've been on mm -hmm. has it helped you sort of change how you view the industry that you work in in any way oh absolutely i've uh, thankfully i you know i must say that i've always done things on my own terms but previously it would be i would still be a bit like you know but maybe uh sometimes for example you feel awkward about saying no to yeah. people you've always respected or uh, you wonder if there's another way to get around that or uh i'm just giving you a simple example so we don't complicate it but now i'm like no but i'm i'm absolutely unapologetic about what i don't want to do or what i want to do i i choose to do i'm also comfortable with the fact that i'm not a social person you know um that is my most uncomfortable space i'm not happy with a group of people unless it's an intimate group of people yeah, who i know really well yeah. you know right. equally well mm -hmm. so i'm not happy walking into a party just saying hi how are you and moving on to the next person yeah. so i will do that with people i'm fond of i will show up but i will exit as quickly <laughs> <laughs> and i've i've become i don't know whether it's unapologetic it's shameless i'm comfortable with who i am yeah I need time to myself in between what I do to recharge. I, yeah, to recharge and I to reboot and I take that time. And uh, for a while in between I didn't like anything I was being offered. I didn't do anything. You know? And for someone who's who started late and therefore was felt the pressure to constantly be working because you feel like you I've already lost out on so much time. I made my debut at 26. Mm -hmm. I re I've reached a stage where I'm I feel like I'm going nowhere. I'm here to stay. And uh, I'll do what really excites me and which holds the possibility of fulfillment. It may or may not finally, but at least holds the possibility of that I'm not going to do it just because I need to. You know, I've gotten very comfortable with all these things now. 
I can see. Yeah. <laughs> it, it comes through. And also, speaking of starting late, you actually, after all the years of working, saw the glory when you turned 40 yeah. with Scam. And I feel like Bollywood didn't know what to do with a woman in her 40s until the likes of you came along as well. What's the best part about being artists in your 40s? Yeah, 40s is new 20s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, and in fact, at 40... If one looks like you, yes. <laughs> at 40, we have good amount of experience of life. Mm, yeah. Which can translate very well in terms of characters, stories. We can add more value to script, is what mm -hmm. I feel. Mm -hmm. And I had always felt that, you know, had a scam happened earlier in my life, I don't think I could have done the same kind of work mm. that I did. So before scam happened, I, I thought about this. For mm -hmm. the longest time, it's very late. It's a little bit quicker, it's a little bit better. But when it happened and the way it happened, I really felt that everything happened at a correct time. The more I got experience, whether it's on stage, or in Gujarati films, or anywhere, that all worked. In your favour. Yeah, in my favour. So I guess this, this is how it is supposed to be. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, turning 40 makes you fearless, especially as a woman. <laughs> Even as men. Yeah? Yeah. Because you're more comfortable about a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's it's so amazing. I recently watched Crew mm -hmm. uh, and I thought it was so cool. You know, you have a Tabu, you have a Karina, you have a Kriti and they're all kicking ass. <laughs> <laughs> Some solid ass, you know. So, I really think it's the best time for women in our business. Yeah. yeah. And I, I see it only getting better yeah. because there are no constraints anymore. That you have to be single, you have to be of a certain body type, you have to be. A now there are, uh, there's nothing really. Um, we're not adhering to those stereotypes anymore. Things have opened up so much, right? Yeah. The horizon has really widened. It's also a, a very. Uh, in, and it's op opening up new kind of storytelling to the audience. Which audiences. is why we get to watch. Otherwise, like this, yeah. all the stories would have similar age groups, similar people, yeah. similar storytelling. Yeah. There is nothing new to offer to the audience then. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like you said, today you feel like there are better roles being written for women yeah. than there are for men, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like when I saw Karina's character and crew, I was so happy there was no, uh, you know, she didn't have a romantic lead. Um, she didn't, there was no explanation for yeah. the way she was. She was just, I think these things are so cool, you know, we're, I think more and more we're getting parts that are, um, that are humanizing us. We're not just being seen as women, we're being seen as human, as whole. Yeah. yeah. And you do know that you have a huge role to play in that. Uh, <laughs> thank so thank you. you. Thank and you. thank you for this conversation. Thank, thank you so you. much for thank talking you. to me. Thank you. Always much. lovely thank talking you. to you.